you doing, everybody? Thanks for joining me. Uh, let's go through my CD collection. How about it? What do you say? We're in the D's. All up in them D's. And we're listening to... Horned Almighty, Contaminating the Divine. Super underappreciated band. Uh, they have got five albums under their belt. This is number three of five. Uh, four and five are also really, really good. I can't even remember where they're from. I should have looked this up. Uh, Denmark. And just really good. Like I call it snot nose black metal because it's kind of punky. Big riffs, big just kind of fist banging kind of stuff. Stuff that would be, you know, go over well at a festival or something in Europe, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I, nine times out of ten, I wouldn't like a band like this, but Horned Almighty just fucking does it perfectly. The last few records. I'm, I need to pick up their other stuff. But uh, their first album, Black Metal Jesus, made me really not care what they were going to sound like. That <laughs> turned me off real quick. But um, I wound up with a copy of it, and it's pretty good. It kind of sounds like Motorhead-ish kind of black metal in a way, or whatever. Good stuff. So, um, also before we get into it, I'm going to remind you guys again to subscribe to my buddy, Justin Stubbs, because... So, my thing is a lot of 90s bands, stuff like that, kind of forgotten sort of deal, and I've just been really enjoying nobody else. No other YouTuber would be talking about the kind of stuff that just gets my growing gurt the way uh, his collection does. And so, he's just in the CDs, just like me. Eventually, he's going to get onto the vinyl, just like me. That was my plan, was to start out my channel doing CDs and then get into the vinyl. Like, you know, spend all the time going through the CDs, garnering subscribers, and then in about six or seven years, if we're not all dead, we're gonna be going through my LPs. So, look forward to that. I don't know, my microphone is not uh, doing a good job today. Whatever, we're, so we're flying through the Ds, and we are on a band. You might be surprised that I once liked, but haven't listened to in a really long time. Um, this was in my get rid of pile for a couple of weeks, but uh, since I expanded the shelving, I don't really need to purge. And uh, I can't deny that Dillinger Escape Plan's Calculating Infinity is a fucking amazing record. When I first heard about, when I, when I first heard of this band, everybody was going nuts about this shit. It was like, so I was the metalhead I didn't really have any metal friends, or they had all kind of moved away. And most of my friends that were into the kind of music that I was into at the time, by the way, again, I live in Iowa, were on the internet. So guys like, you know, we talk about Wayne on, on our videos quite a bit. I talked to him for hours on end, just sharing metal bands back and forth because we were losers in the basement obsessed with metal and here here I am today fucking still obsessed with metal but anyways everybody was talking about this heavy new metal band and people who previously never listened to metal as far as I knew so it was like this punk rock kind of hardcore metalcore kind of thing and it was just completely revolutionizing the boundary between hardcore and metal or metal and really everything else and that was really like the first time this record was the first time where that that line in the sand was blurred and like non-metal people were allowed to listen to kind of metal stuff and uh, it was an exciting time and this album just i think really is the hallmark for that merging of those boundaries but you know, it's an amazing fucking record. This band had so much insane energy packed into this record. Uh, I missed seeing them live in this very town, mere blocks from my home. Uh, they played with Mr. Bungle touring with for the California album, and Dillinger Escape Plan touring for Calculating Infinity. Apparently, the venue sold out, 
and it was like 185 degrees in there and everybody just fucking lost their mind and I wish I could have gone to that. The club holds probably 200 people so it would have been mind blowing but I don't know if I I don't know if you think I knew at that point that you could fucking go to a show at a bar or something I don't know. So after calculating infinity like they kind of fell apart but I do have this EP Irony is a Dead Scene in which uh, Mike Patton sings for them and they do a really really killer version of an Aphex Twin song Come to Daddy um this came out on Epitaph, but I'm also a big Apex Twin fan. And that's it, you know. I haven't listened to these in 10, maybe 15 years or so. So it's not like I'm a big fan, but I do really hold a lot of respect for Calculating Infinity. It's an amazing, amazing record. Next, um, I don't know, this is barely something even worth covering, I guess. But I've got a demo here from a band called Diamond Tyanon collapse the void paragon records of new york i guess this is like a promo version of an album that eventually was legit or something i don't know where i got this i want to say no i don't want to say i am wrong about that i don't know if i've ever listened to this but i think i've heard good things about this band so i should probably get on this it's a, it's a name of a band where I've heard people ask me if I've heard them, and I'm always, like, surprised that they know the name of this band, and I might be maybe confusing it with another band called Diamond fucking whatever. I don't know. That's that's uh, that album. So, we're going on to uh, a big band here. Demi Borger. We'll uh, go chronologically. Um... You know, I wouldn't say Demi Borger are one of my favorite bands, but for... I have listened to a lot of their records for quite a bit of time. Um, for All Tid was not my first exposure to them, as you may assume. Actually, this is their debut. Um, I first started hearing about Demi Borger. It seemed like almost back in like 97, 98 or something. I swear, it must have been the first time a PR company or person or whatever had started promoting a black metal band because these guys were fucking everywhere for a hot minute before before and throwing darkness triumphant came out they were fucking everywhere and they looked cooler than every other black metal band at the time they were in all the death metal magazines and it just seemed like the hype was unavoidable so I had to check out this Demi Borger band. And so at that time, like, I was absolutely knee-deep in bands like Carcass, At The Gates, Fear Factory, Dissection, um, shit like that. And so I dabbled a little bit in black metal. Emperor, Cradle of Filth was also really, really big, but I think this was kind of like the next step in my plunge. Uh, this was the first time I'd seen a band with a guy with a top hat on. I mean... Look at Stian Arstad there, looking, looking all cool. And Throne Darkness Triumphant gets a lot of shit for, I guess, how well known it is. And it's really the first album that sounds really polished. And it's, you know, if you reference my why Peter, how Peter Tapgren ruined black metal video, it's the album where things went digital and sounded slick and I think were profitable. But it doesn't take away from the fact that these are well-written songs they're highly accessible as far as a black metal band is concerned it's really one of the first bands to i think along with emperor and cradle of filth around that time to introduce the orchestral symphonic kind of stuff that sounded kind of believable and sounded like this could fucking work so yeah that that was my first foray into demi borger for all tid though, I've kind of never really got around to figuring out how to like it, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a bonus track on here that is track eight on the debut, and it's really, really good. I would almost say that if this album was completely re-recorded, maybe different studio, different musicians or something, I don't know. Maybe I would like it more. You would think I would like it because doesn't Aldrin sing on this or 
maybe just a couple of tracks or something. I don't know. I've just never really embraced For All Tint like I think everybody and their mother has. Uh, so I just have this bonus track reissue. This has uh, In If It Gets Morka Part 1 and 2. And I think those were songs from the Devil's Path EP, if I'm not mistaken, which came out between this and this. Um, but then, so then we have... Um, so I guess at that point I got really sick of everybody talking about Demi Borger and I didn't give a shit about the two or three or whatever albums with tits on the cover of them. Um, but then I wound up checking out Death Cult Armageddon because Simon Hesnays uh, joined the band and started playing bass and singing in them. And I, I fucking love this record. It's fucking cheesy and dumb. But man, it's just... I can't get over how fun it is to listen to Nick Barker play drums. Uh, all the stupid symphonic kind of stuff is great. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of meathead, kind of, what do you call it, ham-fisted, knuckle-dragging kind of black metal. But I don't know. It's it's the untruest fucking thing. But, yeah, I like it. I really, really like Nick Barker's drumming sometimes. On, his, on Dusk and Her Embraced by Cradle of Filth, the dude is a monster. I absolutely love the drums on that record. And Vampire, oh my god. So, fast forward. I guess, you know, I'm skipping one. I kind of went out of order here. I forgot. Um, eventually, somewhere between, you know, that period, I got Stormblast. And this album just really crept its way into my heart uh, pretty well. I've got it on vinyl. I've got the purple edition of it. And this is the original... Uh, cacophonous version, but yeah, totally just like keyboard, piano, forward. There's something about this this record I liked about that it's like it's subdued. It's kind of morose, and it's uh, it's not out to rip your face off. It's not out to like lull you to sleep either. It's just got the right amount of sort of humbleness to it. Um, it just kind of fits right in there exactly where I want Demi Borger to be. And this is probably my favorite Demi Borger record. Funny that I fucking forgot about it looking through this, but I don't know. I just kind of think of Stormblast on its own. It doesn't... I don't know. I really love this record. But uh, then the band went and totally fucking ruined it by recording it over again with one of the worst drummers, Hellhammer, on drums. So I had this version of it, mainly because this fucking, these digipacks are such pieces of shit. Um, this has a DVD with it, and I was really interested in getting some video material of them playing songs from this one with Nick Barker on drums. There's not a lot of footage, or at least there wasn't around the time this came out of Nick Barker playing drums, and I just, I really like his playing. There's a bunch of old photos from around the time that this album was recorded, but I don't know, I just kind of hate how they felt like they had to go back and ruin it, re-ruin it. Yeah, that's that. So then, um, a year or two ago, my buddy Brandon talked me into buying this Spiritual Black Dimensions, which I think, might be fucking this up, this is the first one that came out after Enthone, Enthrone Darkness Triumphant. This is one of the first albums where I was like, eh, don't want to have anything to do with it. And it's pretty good. Um, I forgot how much I liked the drumming of Chill Y'all. Um, so that was fun. But again, in retrospect, it's a little too over the top with the piano and the, the keyboard and stuff. And I'll even bother saying it now. I've listened to that new Demi Borger record just a little bit and oh my god I'm not fucking interested in hearing that much operatic symphony grandiose kind of bullshit I'm so fucking over it if you can't use that kind of orchestration or instrumentation with a tasteful level of balance then I'm fucking allergic to it on to the next band Disastrous Murmur I probably talked about this when I got it in, maybe six months ago or so, but this is some brutal, awesome early 90s death metal. It came out on Osmos Productions in 93. This is a 2015 reissue. Uh, it's great. 
I would say kind of maybe sounds more like a European version of Cannibal Corpse. Not being a huge fan of Cannibal Corpse, but that's my best uh, submission to you there. That album artwork is the shit. Look at that airbrushed artwork. And then we have this Cordon Saxis. So there was a pretty time when I, I guess maybe the first time I got really, really, really burned out on black metal and death metal. It was probably 2002 or three or four, somewhere around there, probably more like two or three. I turned to grindcore and I don't know. It, a lot of it is total garbage, but there are a few bands that I absolutely love to death and records that I love to death. And this Joho by Discord and Saxis is unfuck withable. I'm thinking about doing a grindcore video because there's really only like a handful of grindcore records that I love and I really love them. When grindcore is done right, it's so good, but when it's done wrong, God, it's so bad. I also have this on LP, but man, some of the riffs like on Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said, mm, so good. Dave Witt's single foot blast beating is also unfuckwithable. So yeah, um, it's grindcore, but it it's not about gore. It's about emotional stuff. It's about the future. It's about technology and kind of post-apocalyptic, all different kinds of stuff. Discord and Sex is, as far as I know, I don't know if I've really heard all of their stuffs. Stuffs? I just said that like I'm a fucking European writing an email to an American distro. Um, but I don't think they ever recorded anything that wasn't really, really, really good. Uh, so yeah, I really miss those guys, and there's a couple of, like, post Discordance Axis bands that came up, like Hayano Daisuke, which, eh, didn't really do much for me. Nothing really does it for me, like Steve Procopio, Dave Witt, and John Chang. That trio just absolutely amazing and I've just ever since Dave Witt joined Municipal Waste I've just felt like I'm waiting for him to stop doing it and go back to being in Discord and Saxis I don't know why he continues to play with that band I have zero interest in listening to Municipal fucking Waste last band Disembowelment Transcendence into the Peripheral one of the greatest Doom Death records ever made I think this might be the third video in which I feature this record, but this is just top fucking notch. Aussie, doom, death. Get this. It's, you know, it just, this sets the tone for what funeral kind of doom metal should be, but it also fucks around with several different styles and merges them all together into one. It's so fucking good. Transcendence into the peripheral. If you heard that bell, that's dinner. And I'm fucking out. See you next time.